Good day again, St. Lucia. Welcome to the program, Agriculture on the Move. My name is Philip Sidney, your host. You probably will have heard on my previous program, I mentioned about the UBEC project, which is a World Bank funded project, unleashing the blue economy of the Caribbean and the other sub projects to that program, where farmers and fishers have received so many assistance from the government of St. Lucia, especially the Minister of Agriculture and uh, Farmers and Fishers. Um, you've, I'm sure you have heard that uh, fertilizers were given to farmers, water tanks, the Farm Labor Support Program, a lot. And that is being done in one year. And that program comes to an end in December. Uh, under the fisheries component, with me is Mr. Henix Joseph, who is uh, the fisheries techni technical officer attached to the UBEC project. Welcome to the program, sir. Thank you, Mr. Sidney. Yes, My man. pleasure. I'm very, very happy to be here. But be just before we get, we get into the program, I, I mean, I must lend my voice to um, Julian and Alfred. 10.72? 10 10.72. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, let me tell you, that was epic. Epic, epic. I mean, I got emotional. I almost, I went into tears, and it was a tears of joy. You know, when I saw the how um, she was received in the various communities coming um, up to Castries, and let me tell you, I, I, I was amazed. That was unity to the top, as far yeah, as St. Lucians are concerned. St. Lucians really came out to support. I mean, all over, all over. Um, St. Lucia, especially the route to the motorcade, and mm -hmm. persons came out in droves to to lend their support mm -hmm. to Juju. And um, you know, it's amazing how even with the kings right now, they are yes. sitting at the top with CPL mm -hmm. and Johnson Charles, who mm -hmm. scored the three, who scored um, he got one of the match, 87, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 80, 89, 89. He got one of the match, and then he said, you know, we did this one for, for Juju, Juju, and yes. they had it the, there, yes. their jersey, yes. ten point seven two, and yeah, even man. and 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 I know that's what we talk about. I know, about. I know. But even Johnson Charles himself achieved a milestone mm -hmm. by scoring by his now the highest run scorer in the CPL, in CPL mm -hmm. three thousand runs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you know, yeah, woo, man. Woo. yeah man. Yesterday <laughs> was really really good. I I enjoyed it. I went to sleep with a, a, a <coughs> joy in my heart. You know, um, you know, we yearned for that for years, eh? Yes. You yes. know, and uh, I I mean people like. You know, uh, Levin Spencer, you know, put us on the map too. But to really bring that gold and silver home, you know. I, I don't know if we could understand the magnitude of this um, winning mm -hmm. of um, both the gold and the silver in the 100 and 200, 200. for St. Lucia. The mm -hmm. magnitude, the, the, um, the airplay, the mm -hmm. airtime. Mm -hmm the advertisement, I mean, the billions and billions of dollars worth. I, mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it surpasses the government mm -hmm. budget for mm -hmm. the country, mm -hmm. what she was able to mm -hmm. do for us. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So, well, give thanks again to you, Juju. <coughs> I wish you luck and good health. Back to our program. Uh, tell me or tell us what has happened uh, under the, 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 the CERC, under the, the UBEC uh, funded project by um, the World Bank. I know a lot has, has gone down. So give us a, just an overview before we actually touch the, the topic that we are here for. Okay, thank you again, Mr. Sidney. And um, let me just take the opportunity to you know, wish St. Lucia well. Mm -hmm. um, the UBEC, like you right, like you right said, is unle unleashing the blue economy of the Eastern Caribbean. And under UBEC, you have, the, you have a CERC component. So UBEC is a project and CERC is a component mm -hmm. under UBEC. And, um, I am more responsible for the fisheries component. Mm -hmm. And under that component, we are, we are, there are a number of things that we're doing where we are giving sanitary and phytosanitary things to, to farmers. 
um, trying to make life safer at sea for farmers. So when they go for fishers, sorry, mm -hmm. my apologies, mm -hmm. for fishers, <laughs> for when they're going out at sea um, for fishing, in that um, we are given uh, on, under this this um, this program the um, the fish the cooperatives or the London sites. Each of them, they have uh, ten of them. They'll be getting each of them will be getting a new ice machine. Mm -hmm. You have the fishers would be getting coolers, but all that, all those things would come through the through the various um, cooperatives. Okay? okay, we are given coolers. We are given coolers. Um, two hundred. Some of them are two hundred eighty nine pounds gallons. Um, some of them are um, two eighty nine. You have one eighty nine. You have sixty six, mm -hmm. and then you have ninety nine gallons. Those coolers are to enable fishers when when they go out to sea and they come back especially the 189 gallon, it's for more for post-harvesting. Mm -hmm. So when you come out to sea, maybe you come out to sea late an evening, and you cannot go out to sell your fish, so you'd have a sub-storage facility okay. so that you could, store, you, could store, you could store your fish. Um, the bigger ones, the 289 gallons, are for persons to really actually for the cooperative to store ice. So the ice machine, they make ice. Um, so if somebody, a community group or member wants to buy ice, that facility will be there where they have the ice storage for cell ice, not just to persons, but more importantly for the fishers. So there, there will be a steady flow of ice because mm -hmm. once you see the fishers go out to sea, when they come back or even whilst, whilst they are out there at sea, they, they, you need the ice to keep the fish fresh mm -hmm. at all times so that when, you, when the fishers now are selling those ice to you, selling the fish to you, the, the, the fish is, is all fresh. Yeah, yeah. Fish safety concerns. Eh? Fish safety or, or, or concerns. food safety, in, food safety. As we see in general. And also... In that, same, in that same component, we are also given some um, stainless steel trays and tables. We are trying to eliminate the whole thing of persons selling by the roadside and they have those um, wooden tables mm -hmm. and, um, you know, cutting of fish, cleaning of fish. Because even in that whole thing, cutting the fish, slicing the fish, using the wooden trays and what have you you have the wood particles they go in the fish and most times when you're cleaning the fish you get you it. see you see in those things and not only that you also have blood going through the cuts that are made on on the on the wood and the wood the, and the, the bacteria yes. and stays, in, stays there. in there i remember there was I, I i'm not scaring people away but uh, you should be scared in the sense that um, i would mostly when, concern yeah and what, what and what happened when you throw disinfectant on that you see maggots coming out of this I mean, you have to be careful. Yeah, because it stays because it's it stays in the wood. Definitely, definitely, you have to be concerned. So if you have those stainless steel trays mm -hmm. and cabinets and what have you, then once you finish cleaning the fish, mm -hmm. you just throw wash. some water, mm -hmm. wash it away, mm -hmm. and it's as good as you. You, mm -hmm. you it is. You could sanitize it a lot better than wood. Mm -hmm. So all those things that um, will be given to the various cooperatives so to be used by fishers. So you say will be. They have not been given out yet? All those things have been procured as we speak. Ah, okay. Um, we had to go through, because the, the, the money came from World Bank, mm -hmm. and World Bank is very, very particular mm -hmm. as to what you do. Mm -hmm. So you must send it out to tender. You cannot just go and say, Sydney, I want you, I want ten. that for me. No, 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 no. You must get a minimum mm -hmm. of three. three quotes, a minimum. You could have 10, 20, mm -hmm. but you cannot have less than, than three. three. Um, okay. If the, now moving forward, um, it's it's always coming to the end, but it's getting very exciting. Uh, farmers, uh, I keep saying farmers, fishers. Mm -hmm. In that, starting October, mm -hmm. we have registered thus far 150 fishers, both male and female, are registered to be certified as boat captains. Great. Okay, Great. and that is being conducted through the marine unit mm -hmm. of the police force of St. Lucia. Okay. And here this, you are not paying a cent. Mm -hmm. The project is paying everything for you. Okay. All you have to do, those persons who are registered, all you have to do is show up at the ending of the certificate, at the ending of the training, you'll be given, well, you have to write, there'll be um, exam. some exam practical and uh, theory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then you'll be certified you will get a certificate, a card through SLASPER that is saying Philip Sidney is now a certified coxswing. I can't remember the terminology properly right mm -hmm, now, but mm -hmm. you'll, be, you'll be a certified boat captain. So in that case, now you can now go and operate 
that vessel without fear or favor. Mm -hmm. And the training is not just to operate the vessel in terms of controlling to go from point A to point B, but there'll be some component at, you know, safety at sea, mm -hmm. um, small maintenance, repairs. If something happens to you underwater, you need, you need to repair something very quickly, mm -hmm. you'll be able to do that. Now, talking about repairs and what have you, there's also a component where we are giving 400 grab bags, 400. So essentially, basically, every boat that is operational and that is registered in St. Lucia, they should be getting a grab bag. Now, when you say a grab bag is, you know, grab and go, mm -hmm. that grab bag will have everything that a fisher should have. Would be, would be. So you'll have flares, you'll have um, GPS radios, you'll have a live vest, you will have everything a fisher would be needing. So once you're going out in the morning or in the evening, you grab this thing, if something happens to you at sea, it will help with all those equipment and everything. So mm -hmm. it would help the um, marine police if they have to come look for you or what have you. It would help them get you, locate you a lot quicker. Mm -hmm. Therefore, um, they would be utilizing a lot less resources. And also, it would help the fisher be a little more comfortable because mm -hmm. you'll have your deep your, your GPS, you'll have your flag, you'll have anchor so that maybe you don't you don't drift. drift you'll far. have you'll have mm -hmm. some sail. So you know it will be That's there'll good. be a lot of things within um, those grab bags. Mm -hmm. Also that um, the, those those boats would be having some of them are out there without without lights. So they'll uh. be getting um, lights for the stern and for the bow. Mm. So once you out there, if you're fishing late at nights or you come in, in port that um, the vessels, whoever somebody identified. is going to show you very, very, very easily mm -hmm. to minimize mm -hmm. any incident mm -hmm. um, at sea. Mm -hmm. So back to the truth, back to the, the to training. The, to the, to the training. Yeah. When, when will that start? We are looking at the first week in um, October. October. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thus far, we have 140 persons registered. And I'm pretty sure after persons view or head this program that mm -hmm. we'll have more persons mm -hmm. coming to register. Mm -hmm. Right now we have we have capped it at one fifty. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean to say that um after this first cohort you have had this first set of training okay. that other persons or the fishers who are interested. Especially we we're trying to target young fishers. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know no longer can you say fishing is for old men. Yep. It <laughs> It's a business, you know. It's a business. I, I, saw, I saw a guy one day. I mean, he, uh, albeit he, he went to sea at about 6 in the morning. He came back about 6 in the night. And for the day, he made $12,000 yep. mm -hmm. in catch. Mm -hmm. 12000 mm -hmm. mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. you will not have it every day. Mm -hmm. Okay? Yep. I mean, you have a lot of young professionals now are now taking fishing as a business. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they are going into it. They no longer want to come sit behind the desk pushing pen and paper, right. but they want to go out there. So we want to target those persons to make them better fishers right. and better boat captains mm -hmm. to go out there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, so you are training, so your first cohort, you're looking at 150. Um, how long will that, that training uh, take? It's supposed to be, the entire program is supposed to be 40 hours. 40 hours. So we are looking at doing four hours a week, two Two hour sessions a week. Okay. You should finish that within f between five to six weeks, give and take. You have to give time in case uh, something happens. Mm -hmm. Now, I forgot to mention, yes, I, I did mention about the ice machines yes. that will be given, mm -hmm. um, the ice machines. Mm -hmm. Also, um, we are looking at the ports and jetties mm -hmm. in St. Lucia and to have lights, proper navigational Lighting. lights okay. at every single point of entry fishing landing site, mm -hmm. port and um, jetties, lights for both um, the jetties and the ports. Again, it's the, it's the whole question now of making life safer at sea mm -hmm. for fishers. Great. Uh, that point we are due for our break. You're watching Agriculture on the Move. Uh, stay tuned. Don't go away. The Ministry of Agriculture, Fisheries, Food Security and Rural Development is placing heavy emphasis on the concept of food security. It's our prosperity, our future. There are business opportunities in fisheries and aquaculture. If you are involved in this sector or you are a member of the Fishers Cooperative, you are entitled to rebate on fuel consumed. The Ministry of Agriculture, 
Fisheries, food security, and rural development also provides technical support and training, as well as juvenile fish for aquaculture or aquaponic farmers. If you are interested in business opportunities in fisheries and aquaculture, you can contact the Chief Fisheries Officer at 468-4135 for further details. Welcome back to the program, Agriculture on the Move. But this time we're talking about fishers under the UBEC program. And of course with me, my guest, Henix Joseph. Henix, I am still back at the, on the training. Uh, I need to know, for example, I know you, you all will not have 150 persons in a room at the same time. Um, how are you going to work it out in terms of numbers being trained at any one time? And um, uh, are you having training around the island? That is correct. We'll be having training around the island. Um, the Marine Police have said that they cannot handle more than a maximum in class would be 30. Great. And um, you have some areas where you have 20 something persons registered. Mm -hmm. For example, Soufre, you have 24 fishers registered. So Soufre will have a center on its own. Correct. Um, but maybe now Soufre will join with canneries because you only have six from canneries. Right. So that gives you a maximum of 30. Mm -hmm. Grossly, you have 15. So grocery will have, will have a center on its own. We are joining castries and ancillary. In those two, you have about 30 as well. Mm -hmm. You have VFO, Swazi, and Labri. That would be one center. And that would be done at the Fisheries Conference facility mm -hmm. in VFO. Mm -hmm. um, then you have Miku on its own. Miku, you have about 21, 22. And also Denry, are about 25. Okay. So you'll have a center in Denry. You'll have a training center in Miku. You'll have one in Grosile, you'll have one in Castries, that would be for Castries and Ancillary, and that again would be at the Department of Fisheries Conference, conference Room there. Mm -hmm. In Grosile, we are looking at you using the Human Resource Center in Grosile. Mm -hmm. So you'll have seven different centers training those fishers, those persons to become certified boat captains. Okay. Uh, what these, I'm sure you are not going to interfere with the, the fishers in terms of when they go out to sea. So what days are you looking at to have those training and what time will they start? We are looking at Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays. We are playing with those, with those three days mm -hmm. and we are looking at five in the afternoon mm -hmm. to seven. Okay. Although some fishers are of the opinion that, look, let me, let me lose a day and um, I'll come and spend four hours. But you don't want to have it in, in a way where, you know, fishers... You're not sure of the, the, the level span, the concentration span, because yeah. even as at times, you know, True. four hours or six mm -hmm. hours to sit that's there. So we, want to, we prefer to give two, two hours mm -hmm. to make the four hours a week, then have persons coming for four hours uh, sit there. Although the commander has said to me, Henix, let me tell you this, um, when we are teaching this program, it's, there is never a boring moment. There is always something happening. There is mm -hmm. always an activity, an activity to have. Even they themselves at um at the, at the marine unit, mm -hmm. they're quite excited mm -hmm. to do that because they were saying that the more persons that could be certified as um, um, boat captains, persons who are able to navigate the seas a lot better, it sees a lot, it makes their work a lot easier and um, persons now begin to understand the sea, mm -hmm. understand the traffic, understand the signs, um, when the vessel is coming, what to do or what not to do. Mm -hmm. So to minimize and uh, eventually to you know, eradicate incidents at sea altogether. Okay. Now, talking about at sea, <laughs> you see me smiling and whatnot because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I'm working. With, I'm working with the project, and I'm and I'm excited. Mm -hmm. There's also a fad making component. As a matter of fact, uh, there is a, a consultant, Robert Lee, not the solution, Robert Lee, mm -hmm. but he's a Trinidadian. Um, he'll he'll be down here. He's there to under, to do this fad consultancy where. It, it no longer, it's not business as usual. It's not come and um, construct a fad and deploy it. There is a, a scientific method for doing all those things. Mm -hmm. well. So it's a new approach. It's a new development. So those persons now would be coming and they would be teaching the farmers and fishers in the, in the different communities. There'll be various groups um, working with for f the fad deployment, how you deploy the fad maintenance of fat they have to do a bathymetric study to look at um how the bottom of the sea how the ocean is how it is operating and some of the best sites to put in those fats mm -hmm. 
and those fads, it, is, it will be there for all fishers. Mm -hmm. And um, let me just say that in this fad deployment that you must work especially with SLASPA, the marine division, mm -hmm. because once you have deployed those fads, you need to take the coordinates and you, have, and you must work with SLASPA so that SLASPA now is going to liaise with the International Maritime Organization so that um, those coordinates will be put out there. So any ship, any vessel that is coming to St. Lucia, they'll be able to plot it on the chart and know exactly where those fads are to prevent any incidents at sea where you have the propellers are uh, being stuck in those, um, in those um, fads, destroying them, cutting the ropes and those fads because you will spend um, quite a significant amount of money mm -hmm. where that is concerned. So you do not want those fads to be damaged. So therefore, you want to be certain that you have the coordinates and everybody coming to St. Lucia navigating would have those coordinates so you know you have your corridor where to pass and where not to pass. Okay. For the viewers, uh, uh, apart from fishers, um, we're talking about fads. Um, it's called the fish aggregate device. device. Yes. Um, <coughs> give the objective of that. A fad, when a fad is, a fad is essentially there so that it could attract small fishes smaller size and you know once you have the small ones the big ones feed on the small ones so why is the small ones are there you'll have the bigger ones coming to feed and hopefully the we big, could feed bigger ones coming <laughs> we could feed of the bigger ones mm -hmm. because um you have at times when persons go by the fad say you you, you catch a, a two pound tuna you would use that tuna as bait to catch a hundred pound tuna and most times this thing happens around the fad it's very rare that you would go out there in the open and catch a tuna or a blue marlin if it is not on the fad. I mean, there are persons there, they do um, net fishing, they have their pots and what have you, but persons who go out there to catch those real big McCoy, the mm -hmm. 200, 300 pound marlin or tuna or snapper, um, most of those things are done um, by at the fads. And one of the advantages of the deployment of the fad is the you burn less fuel mm -hmm. because you go exactly where you would like to go, um, where the fish, you know, is pre prevalent, as opposed to going there and ro rowing there and rowing there and you burn uh, uh, loads of, of petrol and sometimes you don't catch anything. Yeah, I mean, the fad doesn't always guarantee you. It doesn't guarantee, it doesn't you, always guarantee you, but at least it But it the it idea is that, yes, yeah. so mm -hmm. you know there is this fad there. Yeah. Um, there's a, there's very likelihood that you will get fish mm -hmm. on get mm -hmm. fish there. Mm -hmm. You know the you know the, you know fishers are, are very smart. Mm -hmm. They would look at the they would wake up in the morning, mm -hmm. look at look the at sky. the sun, look mm -hmm. at the sky. And say, okay, look, you know something's up. I mean, I've tried a couple, I've tried going out fishing a couple times, mm -hmm. and the first say, okay, where should be sat that with that there? So mm -hmm. they have something. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. let's anchor there mm -hmm. and let's and then mm -hmm. do you know mm -hmm. it's coming about they they eating mm -hmm. like when you mm -hmm. when you are eating mm -hmm. your eating eating your your, your, mm -hmm. your own food. Yeah, yeah. You know so so there's a. a, a a chemistry, so to speak, yeah. um, a magic mm -hmm. in, 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 um, in going out fishing. So under the project, you all have not deployed any fads yet? No. Okay. I, uh, there are fads out there already, but I, I know, um, that I think you'll be deploying another 10. Another, hopefully 10. 10, yeah. It could be less, mm -hmm. but we'll have a maximum of 10. Now, I don't, too, I don't too go too much into, into, into that mm -hmm. um, because this is not my, my, uh, my, my department. All right. When I say department, I mean my project. Mm -hmm. But through JICA, that is the Japanese um, government, the, gov the government of San Lucia, they have deployed a yes, few, a few, a few, a few yes, fads. Yes, yes. Um, you know, these things have, over time, they've gotten old and what mm -hmm. have you, because you have to maintain those fads. You have mm -hmm. to be cleaning them and what have you. So this thing, you know, looking, to, looking at what is called smart fads, mm -hmm. where they would have all the coordinates, they would, you know, different aspects of it. So it's, it should help increase catch and the, the fishers now are very happy with the fads eh? in fact i met a, a gentleman um in miku a fisher and he said boy he would like to meet the person who invented the fad <laughs> to shake his hand <laughs> yeah because the fellas go out there and they take photos of the, the, the catch mm -hmm. they feel they're so satisfied with what 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 they're getting at the fad and now uh, and that is why they would like more fads to be deployed around the island so they they're, they're pretty happy I have no fini on cause a D a special piece of Munga Koti program. La um, Zoni a Koti Yukai by a shy um, Kado Pakado, Messi Semuna Kibizwe Etwan Ma 
c'est mon qui capte ces bateaux. Mais en quoi ce matin, mon développement d'eau, est-ce que nom tout seul Est-ce que c'est femme Là, c'est femme, là, c'est femme aussi. Qui a eu pour un étonnement Là, c'est femme aussi qui a enregistré pour un étonnement pour conduire. Ok, donc dis-nous à bord étonnement ça. Étonnement ça, c'est côté moun qui se pêche, moun qui enregistre quand on pêche et puis département pêche. Yo aba poje yo bek um, on le chine de brou ekonomi koto ni sok kote nou ka ese fe bagay pli eze bay peche pou yo ka le yo ale la me an chay peche yo la wi yo sa kondwi bato a me yo, po, yo, yo pa la nan pils bagay yo pa ka sevi yo pa sa sevi yo pou ko sa sevi e pi yo pa konet li ase bien mm -hmm. entwen man sa kay kay moutwe yo manye pou kondwi en bateau primaire manière pour comporter croyo le à sous de l'eau primaire si y a un danger à sous de l'eau qui ça y ne pour faire des fois un signe qui qui manière pour ça service radio a yo kay ba yo yo kay ba yo flèze qui manière kay service flèze pour ça pour ça um, si um, en la nuit en l'autre bateau yo, yo, pas d'or ben, hélicoptère oui. en danger mm -hmm. um, et puis tout ces bagages comme ça il kay moutou pour ce qui manière si ou pour ça service Um, engine mm -hmm. à bon parti qui ça pour garder pour qui mm -hmm. signe soit sous à sous de l'eau et pour qu'à sortir d'or et puis ou t'en des autres qui signe qui ça pour nous pour garder pour qui ça pour nous pour coûter qui ça pour nous tenir um, bah et quand vous avez soit sous de l'eau qui ça on est pour faire si ma botte botte là de botte um, pour pas quitter et puis aller côté ou ça va chez moi les um, les c'est bas ça il veut yo c'est bateau à quatre descendre comme tout partout mm -hmm. ok c'est Um, tier toutes ces bagages ça pour faire ça pour faire ces bagages ça plaisir pour si un bateau n'est pas en danger mm -hmm. et bien un problème mm -hmm. les um, police maoué quand ça fait plaisir pour police maoué ça, 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 mm -hmm. ça joint c'est moi ça passe c'est moi ça gagne GPS et puis radio et puis mm -hmm. et puis toutes ces bagages ça là ok pour un connu qui a bout une minute pour bout uh, tell again uh, the solutions of course the the boat owners who have not not aware of what's happening where when is that that uh, training going to take place and where okay, okay so we have about like i said about 140 persons registered mm -hmm. um fishers around the island both male and female for the persons who are who are registered in sufre and canaries mm -hmm. the training will be done in sufre mm -hmm. for persons ancillary and castries banan it will be done in castries okay. for grosily it will be done in grosily right. for miku it will be done in miku mm -hmm. for denry It will be done in Denry for Shrozel, Shrozel, Labry, and Vieux including um, uh, Savants. It will be held in Vieux Fort. Great, great. Thank you, my brother, very much. And of course, it is free of charge. Free of charge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. A bel cadeau. Be merci, merci. Henrik, thank you again for being here. And I wish you success with that project. Thank you very much. You've been watching Agriculture on the Move. I want to thank you for viewing the program. Remember, agriculture is our business, and fishers, you are. A business person too so do your best enjoy the program enjoy the training and put it into practice i'm philip sydney saying goodbye and see you again yes i mm -hmm.